anything else that you'd like to hit and cut that we haven't covered that you'd like to but cover? Th things that you, <coughs> you just don't know who's going to listen. How you're going to get it, songs cut. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one of the, uh, you know, I have a song called Rocks in the River. Yeah. That I wrote with uh, someone from, they'd come down from Canada. We were talking one yeah. day and said she went down and threw some rocks in the river. I said, well, let's go do that. I knew a little landing place over here in Bellevue that are behind Quick Car and Bojangles. Yeah. yeah. So let's go down and get this atmosphere and throw some things. And came back and wrote this song about letting go of everything, rocks yeah. in the river. Yeah. You know, this one's for leaving a, leaving home when I was much too young. Oh, that's this good. is yeah. you know, different things. And you're letting go, yet you sound like you're almost writing what you need to let go and throw this rocks. And some skip, some sink, some are heavier than you think. Uh, I met a girl from Mississippi when she came to town, and she recorded it. And the coolest thing is, that was the first time a song had been cut. The album goes out, they send it to their friends and family, mm -hmm. as we all do. And with that song, a friend of her mom called her mom and said, you know, listen to that song. We haven't spoken in years. Mm -hmm. Said we, uh, you know, we had we had some challenges back then, an argument mm -hmm. or whatever. It's time to let go of that. So that's that's the power of a song that, yeah. hey, you know, it may not ever get out there nationally, who knows, but it brought somebody together with that right. song. Right, if you move to someone, that's right. That's all, all the difference in the world. Yeah, and, and that, that's, <coughs> that song also, a friend that I'd met in Georgia that heard that song, and yeah. she calls and says, could my daughter cut that song said and use it for a mission where we do some mission work and with water Excellent. and so forth I yeah. said sure so she and I hooked her up with a guy named Bruce Birch he mm -hmm. recommended a producer in Georgia and they did that song and her mom and dad were in there but the cool thing about that Karen is that song her and her dad were singing together that ended up leading to them uh, getting together in a studio recording two albums, one of them for the church, wow. one of them, one of them you know, gospel songs that they included, and also for the country. So, so that brought them two together to do this project. They sell yeah. it in the church and so forth. Yeah. So it's uh, those uh, kinds of things. The song did exactly what they're supposed to do. When I first got to LA, I interned with a couple of old real building writers, oh, yeah. guys that had, had uh, Al Cash and Joel Hirshhorn, right. guys that had, I mean, thousands of cuts sure. there. Their house cap statements would come in like 10, 12 pages. It was, yeah. anyway, <clears throat> one day I brought a song to show to Joel, and I said, uh, here's a song I think will touch, you know, I hope, it, I hope it touches your heart. And Joel looked at me, he said, touch my heart. He said, who cares if it touches my heart? Who cares? He said, I want your damn song to just uh, stick your fist right inside my chest and yank my heart out, throw it on the ground, and Jump right. on it into a million pieces. Said then, said then you've got a song. Then you so have I've a song. Said I want your song to move me. You know. Right. So, so I mean, you, you never know how they're going to get cut. I was yeah. in a retreat that Amanda Williams did. Ended up writing with uh, with Buddy Hyatt. You know, run the studio piano right. player. I just saw him on the mm -hmm. Opry the other night with Buddy and Keith Anderson and Kim Williams. Cool. <clears throat> And I was reading an article from People Magazine interview about Keith, it was Keith Urban, yeah. right after he'd come back, <coughs> after he got married. And so if we had a little line, said, at least I'm feeling again. And we start talking about yeah. that song. So we, we wrote it. Uh, Buddy was producing Jimmy Fortune, one of the Statler brothers. Cool. And he pitched that, and then he says, hey, Jimmy's cutting our song. Well, the Statlers are, are always right. special because that was my grandmother's favorites. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, you know, I heard the song, and I uh, said, there you go, Mama. I said, I said that's one. I said, yeah. my, my Mama was in heaven. Going around, I said, one of the Statler brothers cut my boy's song. That's so, cool. I mean, so it's special. And another yeah. guy, uh, Brad Puckett, cut it and put it out as a single on some of the charts. Cool. I mean, to be able to... To do that, it was yeah. pretty neat. And yeah. there's been some other yeah. really neat songs, you know. It's Frankie Ballard cut a song that me and Mark Allen Barnett did. Yeah. But unfortunately, it was on the one before the Warner Brothers album. Yeah. So, hey, yeah. you know, maybe perhaps they heard it. Yeah. I don't know. Hope and they liked it. it. Who knows? And we, we hope down the, down the yeah. road, it's kind of a song to inspire you. It yeah. has a line about a, he always had the strength of a bull. 
And Frankie said when he would play that, up when he was in D Detroit and toured around before his record deal, so people come up, that's my dad. <laughs> they come up and see this bull tattoo right here. That's my dad. You sung about him. And that's cool if you can put smiles on yeah, exactly. people's faces, Gary, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's it, what it's all about. It's about moving yeah. other people. Well, and, and you <coughs> think back, okay, remember I was talking about Orange County mm -hmm. and where I got the idea for the, yeah. the Nashville Muse. Uh, my friends Bev and Cliff Nelson and Dee Briggs, they would make trips here before they right. moved here. And we started writing a song called Got the Talking Part Done. And uh -huh. this really cool thing uh -huh. about that song is so we wrote it, and I pitched it at a, uh, used to help this guy named Tandy Rice, a legend. Yeah. He did this thing right. called George Jones University. And I gave a, a gentleman, an artist that uh, was in the Army, mm -hmm. so well, here's a couple songs listen to when you're way back home. He calls says, man, I got to cut Got the Talking Part Done. I said, okay. So we came up cool. to Jay's Place studio, and he cut it. And I ended up knowing the guy, uh, Scott Lindy, that worked mm -hmm. at Sirius XM. And he was always saying, Doug, find me some new independent songs. And cool. uh, Sirius used to do a show from 10 o'clock to midnight on Saturdays, new music, yeah. with the big artists and some of the new ones. Yeah. And he put that on Sirius Radio, and it ran for about two months. And that was a thrill Sweet. to be able to do that. Sweet. And my hometown station played it a couple of weeks. And yeah. Sweet. So you, you just never know, but again, you build these relationships, <coughs> and these people in Orange County that I met through Mark Allen Barnett before yeah. I went out there, yep. you know, one thing leads to another, but that's one of the favorite songs that a lot of people like. I, I, I had a weird thing, when the, you talked about not knowing where things can lead. Um, I had a friend who became the head of the theater department at a large Texas university, and uh, emailed me one day and he said D -d -d do you have any songs laying around that like rock songs laying around that never got used or you know that, right. that nobody else owns that <clears throat> that i could use we're doing an original play player musical about a bunch of scientists that have a rock band on the side and so uh i sent him i guess four songs that uh that just had never gotten used in tv got right never found the right a home spot or whatever you know and um and forgot all about it you know, so uh, maybe, I don't know, six, eight, nine months, a year goes by. I get a big package in the mail, and it's a certificate from the National Kennedy Center for the Arts. It, it's, it's a musical achievement award from the Kennedy Center for the Arts. And I'm going, what the, uh, uh, she's totally confused. And I'm going, so, you know, I phone him, and I said, what, what, what was this for? You know, he said, oh, it's, it's for the, uh, you know, the, we had the, the big uh, college uh, theater right. uh, contest up here in Washington, and uh, your play won. And I said, well, and that's when I realized, yeah, it was the Texas. So I phoned my friend in Texas, he said, oh, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got to tell you. <laughs> So I, you know, so I've got this Kennedy Center Honors uh, Award for Excellence in Music for, you know, just, I mean, it was so, like like you say, you just have no idea where the things are going to lead. No, no, you, 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 you just, don't. You don't have to they're going to change lives or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, you, you can work a month on a song and then just not have it ever touch anybody, and you can, this is something can spew out in five minutes that might be, you know, the most touching thing you've ever done. You just, you just don't know. Yeah, you, you you don't you don't know who's who really loves it and what's going to make you keep it up there. I have the first song yeah. I did as a write up, writing with a hit writer. Yeah, when I was living in North Carolina, wrote with a guy that had lived here, had a lot of success, moved right. back. A song called "Like No A New Rain." Oh, that's cool. And uh, <laughs> that's a good title. Adequate, thank you. And I had a, you know, I got it from a book that yeah. uh, the guy who who wrote the book, uh, Bridges of Madison County. Yeah, I saw this line on of his, and that book, one of his other ones. That's a great. When line. I went to the co-write, because you never know, right. I said, "Bring me your ten best ideas," and there it was, and we wrote it. Yeah. Well, that song was. Uh, I had a friend, Jack Perry, that passed away about ten years ago. His dad was Gaylord Perry, baseball oh, player, yeah. right. and uh, that was Jack's favorite song. I remember when Jack got cool. lymphoma, he was in a hospital, you know, and mm. uh, I, I drove from here to. To see him in a hospital <clears> one <throat> Saturday, and he's laying there. 
and his family's talking and, and everything. And Jack looks at me and says, did you bring my song? I said, of course, Jack. That's why I came. He said, hey, y'all shut up over there and play your song. Yeah. And he made them listen to it. And his last, one of some of his last words, you get that song cut. Yeah. And I pitch it every time. Yeah, you gotta. And, and, you know, and who knows, but I, I just believe in that song, and I'm going to get that song cut for Jack. It's just a matter of finding it the right home at the right time. Yeah. That, and that's what it boils down yeah, to. Yeah, I, I visualize the number one. Yeah. And you call me crazy, I visualize the number one party where we're wearing Jack Perry buttons. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? It, it's not crazy at all. Uh, Jill Colucci was a good friend yeah. of mine in, in sure. L.A. And uh, I was over to her house and helping her with some stuff, and we were making a, you know, little demos, you know, to send out. And she had this song that was number one, and I said, Jill, that's, I said, that's, that's dated. It's, that's kind of like, it's like 10-year-old funk. Nobody in, you know, nobody yeah. in L.A. is going to cut that. That's not, it's, just, yeah. it's, it's not working. You need to get that off your demo tape. She's like, it's my best song. Right. I mean, she really believed it. And I said, well, at least put it last. I mean, because seriously, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's, it's, she's like, no, it's my best song. I said, okay, okay, girl, whatever, you know. So thank God she didn't listen to me. No one else on <coughs> Yeah. Is that what she it was? made a trip to Nashville, was sitting in the office with at an appointment at EMI. Right. You know, and uh, why, why not as producer came walking in and is said, I'm sorry to interrupt your session, but he said, you know, we got the whole album done, but we just, we, we want something a little unusual, something a little off the wall, something that's not really entirely country. And it's just, you know, you got anything? And Jill said, I do. And, you know, no one else on earth, you know. That's a great story. Y I've never heard, I know Jill. I've never yeah, heard that story. I mean, it's just, it's like, you know, so, so um, in the meantime, uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, in the meantime, I had moved here, and I think she was still there. I can't remember. One of us had moved, and the other one hadn't yet, so right. we were in different cities. So I turn on the radio one day, and I'm going, wait a second. That's why Nona. I'm going like, is that? That's no. no. <laughs> it's a song. It's never no. It's never no. So uh, next time I talked to Jill, she said, I told you so. I love that. Yeah, you know, I think there's something, I don't know if anybody's ever addressed it or not. Yeah. On a show. It's staying on the journey. Yeah. You know, I've been here 13 years. I've been writing six years before I moved, at least. Yeah, I, yeah. No, 12 years, 13 years before I moved. Yeah. It's a long journey. I mean, something would happen, yeah. you know, I'd be a 26-year overnight success in this town, you know? <laughs> That's like, exactly. From the first time I started writing in 1989, right. writing these brilliant lyrics, you think, at the time. <clears throat> and it, it, it's, you know, it's a long journey. Yeah. And you just got to stay positive as you go have your tough days, Gary. But you reach out to your friends. Yeah. And say your thanks. I mean, you know, we all have tough days. Like, man. Wait a minute. I remember when that was my dream to have a tough day living in Nashville. I'm okay. <laughs> that was my dream to go through some some challenges here. But I'm in Nashville. Right. And we exactly. all go through them and, and to reach out yeah. and, and read positive books. Yeah. Listen to your songs. Listen to your the songs that that made you want to write songs. Right. Sometimes I'll take a trip and I'll and on my iPod, not my iPod, you know, but my phone. Uh it's those songs that made me love music. Now I'll listen to them, and then sometimes I'll go back and listen to my songs. Yeah. Like, wait a minute, that is a good song. I gotta pitch that. Yeah. I gotta believe in it. And <laughs> again, it's it's a long journey. I, but I had a day at my doctor's uh, three or four years ago. Uh, he's a big guy that was an army physician, and you know, uh, came back here, and and uh, and we were both having a bad day, and, right. and we always chatted a lot when I, you know, <clears throat> have an appointment. And on this particular day, we started, we were both whining to each other about our, our lives and our jobs, right. you know, complaining. And here, you know, I am thinking, he's a doctor, he's got all kinds of money. He's right. his perfect life, you, sure. know, you know, driving Mercedes. And of course, he's thinking, hey, he's just playing music all day and having a great time. He's got a praise. So, so we start talking to each other and we start realizing just the irony of the entire conversation. And, and so at one point I said, well, you know what, you know, at least he, you're making tons of money you get tons of money and he said you know what Gary he said tons of money don't mean nothing if you're not doing what you like doing and you're not doing what you're passionate about 
And he said, you know, I'm just, I'm not passionate about being a doctor anymore. He said, people come in here and, and he said, I'm everybody's parent. I just have to say, stop smoking, exercise, lose weight. He said, I say it to everybody all day long and nobody ever does it. And he yeah. said, I'm just, you know, he said, I'm tired. He said, at least you can go home and, you know, play some music. And, you know, I, I realize he, I mean, yeah. he was but, right. But Joe didn't try to switch for a day, though. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's staying positive. It's, it's, it's reading positive books. Yep. I'm going to have some devotionals I read. And then when, I, yep. when I get through those, I would throw this out. You may like it, you may not. But here's one thing that helps me. Uh, a gratitude journal. Yeah. And I'll write down five things I'm thankful for mm -hmm. about every day. And it could be what happened yesterday, <clears throat> who I talked to, uh, calling my parents, the time we spent, or calling friends, things like that. But the fifth is always a memory. Mm. And I may be thankful for the memory of what are those four things I just wrote about? Or, Whatever. you know, if it's a pretty yeah. day and I'm thinking about, in baseball, the World Series, man, I'm thankful for those days of little league memories. Yeah, Just anything that you have, like, Okay, Lord, I'm still here. I can still keep going no matter yeah. what happens. Yeah. And then if you have those fun days, you know, you have them, and you think back about the Nashville moments that we've all had. <laughs> you know, the dreams yeah. we've had, the people yeah. we've got to meet, some of them. <clears> that, <throat> um, uh, for me, I've grown up, uh, you know, listening to music, and I've been able to become friends with people who wrote those songs I loved yeah. or become friends with some of my favorite musicians or artists growing up and now you know now you're for friends you've had such great experiences it, Nashville's unbelievable I I was in Guitar Center one day and wound up hanging with Motley Crue for an hour you no know. kidding yeah I mean it just you know they flew in from LA because things weren't going well so they would just wanted to do their do their album here instead right. and, and they left a bunch of equipment behind and came in to get equipment so I started following them around, buying everything they were buying, all the software and stuff. <laughs> it's working for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that was my thought. So, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they bought a couple of things that surprised me that I promised I wouldn't even bring up. Yeah. And and uh, and you know, so I was like, wait a second, you're using yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it got to the point where we even when it, then by the time we made it into the drum place, you know, he bought like a certain brand of sticks and he said and give him some too he wants everything I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> it was, was kind of sad actually I was, yeah, but well, I, was, I was having a good time so. well I mean you just never know I mean exactly I, you know there's a you guitar know. player to move to town that I used to go to me and my friends he played for another, another artist yeah. and <clears throat> after meeting them and uh, a friend of mine introduced us so well hey let's go to lunch on Monday and I became friends with this guy, yeah. and then after, and he, he put together a little band. And I couldn't believe we were out one evening. So you know what? We ought to play out sometime. He's talking to the drummer. I said, "Well, hey, you want me? You want me to do that for you? Let me book you mm -hmm. like next week." He said, "Yeah." So I called uh, a client of mine, a venue. I said, "Would you like to have so and so play your venue, and maybe we could set up like every Tuesday night?" And so for the next three or four months, this one of my favorite guitar players from back in the day, like I said, he was a big singer for the big artist. Mm -hmm. And that's the guy we used to see on stage. I'm the guy. And you're that, that, that had to, that called him a friend to get him booked. Yeah. So you just never know. But again, it's about building those relationships. It is. It is. And you don't know where you're gonna run into your It is. To your next friend. That's true. And quite frankly it's it boils down to friends and relationships. Yeah. But you know that saying about yeah. friends? I came up with? Uh, no, which one? Oh, oh, yes, I do, but go ahead and say it. No, go it, ahead. It may not. Friends don't let friends play to an empty room. Get out and support your friends. Exactly. Oh, here, I thought you were going to say friends don't let friends drink Folgers. <laughs> that, but that's I'm, Starbucks, isn't yeah. it? That's I don't know. I've never had a cup of coffee. I don't know. I don't know. So but you're exactly right. Get out and support your friends. Support your friends. Yeah. Keep writing. Keep believing yeah. in that dream. Reach out. You know, there's, uh, I've been here 13 years this month. Yeah. And, you know, it's tough. You haven't had the big hit yet, but you got to keep going. And I'm reminded, hey, our friend Kirsty yeah. Manna was here 15 years. Then Austin got cut. It's made a big difference, made a yep. big difference to her and her great husband. And some of those things, pick somebody 
that you know their story, read so much about everybody <coughs> in the business. Hey, if she would have quit at year 14 or 14 and a half, yeah. she would have had a success. And then I just, uh, as a CMA member, I just got Blake Shelton's 20 Greatest Hits. And there it was, Austin's the number one song again. So That's cool. this is the gift that keeps on giving 20 yeah. years later. So, I mean, you, you just don't know. But, you know, you just got to be thankful, I think, and just Sweet. keep doing it. Call me crazy. I don't know. What keeps you going, man? You know, I always say that um, that all of my cuts are probably due to obstinate ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> As if I knew better, I probably wouldn't have stuck with it long enough to yeah to get it. <laughs> uh, I'm reminded of you know, Michael Peterson was here for several years. He'd written a song, and ten years later, it got cut and went to yeah. number one. It's like. I was a number one writer for 10 years. I just didn't know it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what I say. You had any, you know, you had any major cuts? Or, yeah. you know, have you written any number one yeah. songs? I, we, we've both written several number one yeah. songs. They just haven't been cut yet, right? Yeah. I, I Think positive. can't see how many times I've <clears throat> worked with a songwriting, you know, groups of songwriters in front of the city or something, and just heard some fantastic songs. And I just tell them, you know, it's just a matter of getting to the right person at the right time. And... You know, and and, that, and that's that's tougher if you're not here. I realize, but you know, the 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 bottom line is you just you just keep plugging because uh, you know, I uh, my very first day in L.A. It was in the middle '80s. Uh, I pitched a song face to face to Michael Jackson, who's the biggest star in the world, and the if I would have had any idea that there's no way that I could have got into to the Jacksons or right. Michael Jackson, then if I would have had any idea and if I would have known that, then, you know, uh, never would have happened. And, uh, but I was ignorant and I was um, enthusiastic and I was persistent. It took me about eight hours and I finally snuck in with a food delivery guy <coughs> for with dinner. And, and he was wonderful. He invited the food delivery guy and me to sit and eat with him and, and it, while he listened to the songs. And the songs were grossly inappropriate. They were, they were more of a uh, Lou Rawls kind of like right. for low voice, oh, yeah. old school Motown sure. guy. And here is Michael Jackson and Billy Jean and stuff. And I'm pitching him this. And, and it, you know, but he was so nice. And, you know, the music had done, he was, had something to the effect of... Uh, well, that's pretty good, but I think it's a different direction that I'm going right now. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, he's really nice. He sure. should have called the security and had me thrown out, yeah. but he didn't. Right. And, you know, what did I know? Uh, yeah. I didn't. And then I literally left his place and went straight nuts for him at John Brahaney. It was what that a night. day. What yeah. a day. You never well, know that day. Well, I, I got to tell you how the day opened. I had an appointment with a reasonably well-known publisher. Right. And obviously, within a minute of showing up, he realized that I had was a rube that had just fallen off the turnip truck. Okay, right. so and I brought a, a reel to reel, which was recorded at seven and a half. And so we went in his office, and he stuck it on and punched at fifteen hips, double speed. Right. And then he lit a cigar, put his feet up on the desk, when the music's gone ring, ding, 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 ding. So after about thirty seconds, I said. You, you know that's that's going too fast, right? And he said, "I know. That's how I get through them faster that way." <laughs> so that's what made me want to say to heck with the publisher, because right. I'm going to go to the biggest star in the world. There, there you go. You but then know. I went that night to LAS and heard John talk and realized that that neither one was the right way to go, and that I needed to do things right and take time and and yeah. learn, and not not to mention I needed to have more than one song. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote the hit song. I didn't need to write anymore. They just need to cut it. Exactly. There's my millions. That was it. Well, it's yeah. it. I made a trip to L.A. Probably about 1,900 miles for, with one song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, my, my, my friend Cliff Doyle has a saying. He says, I wake up on fire every morning <clears throat> and think this could be the day that changes my life. That's true. And you, you mentioned those websites a little bit ago for me. The, yeah. yeah. Musicstartshere.org. Mm -hmm. Again, that's the site. It's like Music Road 2.0. Right. Everything's there. The pros giving the advice. You go in. Yeah. The really cool thing is 
You go in and you join, it's free. Build your profile. Your profile can have your song, videos, mm -hmm. you can write blogs, put, put photos on it, and you can connect with the other members of the site. Gotcha. In That's addition great. to learning where to, who's playing where tonight and other events, and it's broken up mm -hmm. into artists, musicians, <coughs> songwriters, uh, studio tech, and music business. So you can learn all phases of the music mm -hmm. right there, one-stop shopping. That's cool. That, cool. And you mentioned Doke Music, where you mm -hmm. can find my music, and now yep. I've incorporated that site onto the Music Starts Here site. Excellent. And Facebook. You're on Facebook. Facebook, too. Doke Turner and Doke Turner Nashville. Excellent. And then Twitter, Dokester. Excellent. Dokester. Okay. Yeah, D-O-A-K-S-T-R. Yep. And, uh, cool. you know, it, you know, thank you for having me today, Gary. Excellent. We've been talking about this, and it's time to enjoyed it. Do it. It's fun. Good stories. Thank you so much. And if I can help yeah. anybody out there, feel free to contact me. You know, Doke at Doke Turner or Doke at yep. Music Starts Here. Dot org. Get in. Get signed up. There you go. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you.